Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Game Dev Tycoon Strategy and Tactics Episode 1. So, way back in the day, um, uh, in the in, in when my channel was in its infancy, um, this was a game that I actually covered. It was the second game ever covered on this channel. Uh, and I stand uh, behind my coverage back then, but there were a few flaws to it. Uh, one was that um, it was cut short due to a technical issue, and two was that my audiovisual skills at the time were sorely lacking. So this series hopes to do it justice. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the game, Game Dev Tycoon, well, it, it puts you in the role of a game developer way back at the, uh, basically when gaming uh, was at its infancy, and and has you play a company all through to modern uh, day, uh, modern day stuff. So <clears throat> uh, let us uh, dive right in, get our company a going, um, and uh, yeah, let's see if we can uh, make lightning strike and get our company off the ground like we did way back in the day. Uh, speaking of way back in the day, I think it would behoove us to um, use the same name from back in the day, which I believe was Ficklewood Studios, and I am your player, Pinstar. And I believe this is what we had the, uh, the dude, dude man look like. I have a shirt that is that exact color, which is kind of why I'm going with that. So, yes. And yes, hence... I actually think this slot number three here was our old save from the old series. Um, I uh, The game has changed since then. I think it would behoove us to uh, start afresh. But yeah, let's just dive right in and go from there. Yes. Okay, so the name of the game here obviously is Making Games. Uh, so let's, uh, th and that's the first thing we, uh, we need to do, first thing we can do. Uh, now, one of the uh, fun things with this game is that every game you create, you uh, you can assign a name. Um, and I am going to be making a prodigious use of my name in-game patrons to uh, help me come up with some of these names and, well, have their names incorporated into them. I'm not going to do it for the first couple of games, just because a lot of these games are sort of rapid-fire, little itty-bitty games that uh, uh, we may not be treading on too much, but... In the second phase of the game, we're going to be making bigger, more substantive games, and that's when my name and game patrons will come into play. Want to get on the uh, action um, and, and want to get your name in the game? Take a look at my Patreon page below in the description for more details. Right then, let us dive in. Now, one of the nifty things about this series is... Um, the, uh, the, the, there are a bunch of different game topics that you could make a game about. In fact, they've been adding topics over the year. Like when we, when we last played the series way back in the day, there weren't nearly as many topics as there are now. Uh, so these are some, uh, we, we may encounter some new ones that I've never even seen before. But what, your, what order of topics become available for you to research and which four topics you get to start the game with will kind of dictate your strategy at least in the very early game. Um, and you can get some, some good sets of topics or you can get some mothballs. Let us cross our fingers and see and, and hope we get a good set here. Uh, fashion? Dance? Uh, huh. oh. Oh, it, crime's also not that good because he, we don't really have early access to mature titles. Uh, we got colonization! Yay, colonization! Oh, I can work with colonization. Oh, ugh, ah, ah, ugh. Freaking, see, fashion and dance, the reason why I'm, I'm sticking my tongue out then, fashion and dance are, are game topics that are suited for casual, the casual genre of games. One, we can't even make casual games yet. That's a, that's something you get to research a little bit further in the game. Uh, so even if we wanted to make casual games, we couldn't. Secondly, I don't like the casual genre of games, just in-game in, in, in and in reality. So we aren't even going to be researching 
the casual genre of games because I don't want to freaking make them. Well, you know what? Actually, you know what? This is, this is, th there's a silver lining here. We've got these mothball topics now, which means they're not going to show up further down our research, which means we can get them out of the way now when making a game for them, you know, does the, is it the perfect topic? No, but we could get them out of the way, get our experience gone and just go and make some real games. So, yeah. Um, let's call this, oh, what can we do for our, what's, what can we do for our fashion game? Oh, let's see. We'll make it a racy one. There we go. If we had, if we could do mature, we'd make it mature. Um, now being that we don't have that, I think... I want to say simulation. Yeah, simulation is sort of the the next best way to do that. So, you know, in that sense, okay, fine, we'll go with that. Um, and uh, simulation games are a little bit better than the PC. So we'll go with the PC here. Um, yeah, we'll do some graphics. I don't really see this game doing too well, but as long as it turns a profit and we make enough to get, get in there... Ah, so, so um, in my original playthrough here with the sliders, so this is where we're allocating our various uh, work efforts. You know, how much time do we spend on building up the game's engine or its gameplay or its story or quests? And how much of these things matter is dependent very much on the genre. Now, before, I used to do sort of a seesaw technique where you know, in order to just fully balance out the experience points, um, we would do for tech games, we would do this, even though it would be better for gameplay to be, to be um, higher. Um, in this case, I've decided, you know what, it's actually not that important to do that. So we actually can sort of follow these to, to a T. So we're going to put you about halfway because you like two stars. Gameplay is the most important, followed by engine. Story and quest, not so much. Okay, artificial intelligence. Ironic for the topic. Um, and level design, uh, but not so much dialogue. So let's go with that. Now, as we cook along here, we are generating bubbles. Um, you've got design bubbles, technology bubbles, and, well, bugs. Um, and a lot of these are dependent on the, the, not only your character skills, but also the nature of the, the things that you're, you're doing. So, for example, world design uh, is more of a design focused element. So if this is high, you're going to be generally gen generating more design bubbles. Um, Whereas, for example, AI, that's more tech focused and you'll be generating more tech bubbles normally. Uh, there's also a, an RNG factor here. We're generating a lot more design for this game than we really want to. Uh, we actually want more tech, even though it's fashion and you would think design would actually probably be the smarter thing. But I digress. World design, not so much. Graphics, sound, good, good. All right, why don't we finish this lark and just get out of the way and never speak of the topic again. All right, we, uh, we can spend a little time to finish up the bugs and I will at least do it that it's that courtesy. Um, now again, as long as this is good enough to make us a little money, I think we'll be okay. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, so one other thing we want to do after each game, generate a game report. This not only gives us an extra couple extra points of research, which we're going to use to um, get new new goodies for our game engines and new to topics and techniques, uh, but just in general, it gives us an idea of what we did right or wrong on any of these. All right, let's see how we did here. All of these ratings are out of 10, by the way. All right, a seven. I'll take sevens. I, 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 this is, this is ever so slightly than, better than I thought it would do. So yeah, sixes and sevens, a five. So basically a, a, a it, it is rated of overall a six. That's fine. I'll take a six. I will so take a six. 
favorable reviews, good stuff here. We're not gonna make Boku bucks from this game, but it's still selling pretty well. Uh, 4.1K uh, units in the first week, not too bad. Uh, we have some fans. They, uh, they, they, they like them, them gownless evening straps. Um, and yeah, but when making a game, we generate some research bubbles. There's our game report. Uh, graphics, very important. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Dialogues, not so much. Yeah, that also makes sense. Right then. So, next thing. So now, we could spend some of our research points to get a new topic. But again, they give us the four topics for free and waste not, what not. As much as I gnash my teeth about them, we're going to use them because they're free. All right, let's get this lark out of the way. Dance. So you think you can dance. More dancing simulator um, on, on a PC. I don't know how that would work. <laughs> like I could say something like a DDR pad, but that doesn't really exist at the moment. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll call this uh, Fastest Fingers, because I the only way I can think of playing a dancing game on a computer is by tapping the keyboard rhythmically. Um, yeah, uh, there, there. Um, and again, since it's a simulation, and since we're all, we're we, we're not rolling in the dough, we're gonna stick with the PC. So Fastest Fingers. Graphics version one. Now what we ultimately want to do is we do want to balance between our tech focused games and our design focused games. Simulation, strategy, and action are all tech focused games while RPG, adventure, and casual are the three um, design focused ones. Ultimately I want this company to be a tech focused one because that was kind of the direction I was going on with the original one. Uh, that's not to say we will never make a design focused game. By the way, since this is um, another simulation game, we're gonna leave the sliders exactly where they are. Now, even within different uh, uh, design ones, hey, we cracked 10K on our first game, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, you know, even within, you know, tech focused games, there, will you stop having dandruff, dude? That's enough with the dandruff. Right then. Um, you know, even even within the different tech uh, genres, the sliders are very are, are slightly differently, uh, making each genre its own thing. But again, simulation is simulation. So this is probably going to do about as well as uh, our dance game. Maybe a little better, maybe a little worse, depending on how the RNG hashes itself out. This one's going to be better because tech is over designed, so the ratio is better. Uh, you generally want a, sort of a two to one ratio um, when it comes to simulation games. Um, so ideally, if this was like, you know, uh, 14 and, and 10 or 14 and nine, uh, maybe that would be a little bit, actually a little bit better, even if we'd have fewer bubbles, but this still should be close enough. So this will probably give us some higher ratings. All right, let's see how fast his fingers did. I could be wrong about the whole higher rating thing. Sevens, all right, so far. Oh, there's an eight. All right, slightly higher ratings. Now, keep in mind, the way this game works, the way the whole rating systems work is you're always competing. Well, normally you're competing against yourself, but at the beginning of the game, you're competing against sort of a preset goal here. And we're just kind of just barely brushing up against that preset goal. Um, normally when you crack, uh, when you meet or exceed that goal, you're going to start getting, uh, eights, 8.5s, nines, that sort of thing. So we're falling just short, which honestly, that's okay. That's perfectly all right. Cause then, again, these are not terribly good topics, uh, at least for what, what I want to use them for. All right, yeah, just a bit more in sales on that first week. We're easily gonna crack 10K with them. All right, finished our game report. 
gameplay very all right let's all right uh game number three we need one more game colonization could be a good one to grab uh but i kind of want to well no we can save crime for later hmm yeah you know what i kind of want to save crime because crime really wants to be a mature game and we will, in the very near future, gain access to be able to set our game's rating, basically go for young audiences, E for everyone, or M for mature. Um, and then if you certain genres like games of certain age levels, and crime likes it when you're mature. So let's go for colonization, because I think that's... Right now we're basically, since we don't have the option, we're making everything E for everyone, essentially. Um, and once again, we could do simulation. Let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's go for strategy. Cause I think colonization and strategy work well. I mean, this is kind of the Europa Universalis or Crusader Kingsy type thing here. Actually, it would be more Europa Universalis if we're talking colonization here. Um, and, uh, since we're going strategy and that works on either one, let's go with the G64. Uh, let's see if we can get a big sales there before Nintendo starts eating their lunch. Um, now, let's see. A colonization strategy game. Hmm. Okay. So, we, uh, let's, I, I, you know what? Let's, let's bring in one of my name and game patrons. Because I could see the colonization strategy game being used again for like a sequel w later on in our company's life. So let's get, let's get their name in the, in the card so that they might uh, be used once again. Um, uh, let's call it uh, Kiko's Hike. The, uh, the, the, the journey to colonize the frozen north. All right, 2D graphics version one. Um, all right, so same same uh, settings here for engine and gameplay. Fair enough. We should get a bit more sales on here. We want more with level designs, not as much with artificial intelligence. Still, no, still don't care about dialogues. All right, Ninvento. Yeah, all the all the. Um, the, the branded stuff is is off-brand names, but in the game makes it real clear exactly what products and, and companies we're talking about. Uh, Ninvento is a known for a widely successful arcade game, Dinky King. Many industry experts doubt that home gaming consoles will take off, but are eager to see what Ninvento will deliver. Yeah, many, many gaming experts are dumb. They do not know what is the storm that is about to happen here. The can of worms that is being opened here. Okay, uh, yeah, graphics, not so important. World design is important. Um, and sound level one, there we go. Yeah, world design is, is like the big pivot here. I don't know how well this is going to perform. We may have gotten some bad bubble RNG here. Especially since we're, we're, our, our ratio is off for a tech game. Well, we'll see what, we'll see what they say. Hiko, I apologize if this game sucks. We will, we will be, we will try to do it justice later on in the playthrough when the form of the sequel. All right, let's see what the critics think of Yahiko. Starting off with a six. Oh, but, and then up to an eight. Well, these critics don't really know what this, and back down to a six. <laughs> Guys, make up your mind. Is this game good or not? Okay, it's, it's, it's okay. It's a 6.25. Oh, no, 6.5. Never mind. All right, so it's not so bad. Okay, the Ninvento, the TES, early next year. We may or may not uh, hop on that one. Uh, certainly not with crime. 
All right. Now, normally we would just roll into into our fourth topic, crime. But again, I'm waiting for that mature audiences thing. So let's actually go and get ourselves a new topic here. Uh, research. We could, yeah, we actually, we also want to get our custom game engine here. We are going to use a new uh, game engine for this whole thing, but we are also going to want to get a, uh, a new thing. We are making a fair amount of sales here, too. Uh, the, the G64, since it is current market leader, is going to divert a lot of funds our way uh, in that sense. So we're sitting at 312k. Um, not too bad financially speaking. Game tutorial is wonderful. Okay, um, we're not going to research that just yet because we want to use our research points for a new topic. Let's see what we got here. F school, farming, law, and wild west. I can make use of this. This is, this is really good. Like school, school is surprisingly, surprisingly versatile for a topic. Um, and it's also really good with young audiences. Um, so I'm not going to go with it right away, but once we get access to that, we can do some really good school-related uh, stuff, especially with the TES, because they like young audiences too. Um, let's do... You know what? Let's go for Wild West. I'm feeling I'm feeling my oats with some Wild West, or either that or some... No, let's get some Wild West on. Let's get a little Wild West on. Cause I'm feeling a, uh, I'm feeling me some wild arms, uh, wild west RPG. Oh, we could release that for the TES because TES does like, um, does like itself some uh, RPGs in addition to action, and it's it's going to be the dominant market share. But first, we got to make our custom engine here. Um, let's call this the, um, Pinstar Prime Engine. Well, or just call it Pinstar Prime. Um, so the reason why we're going here for the engine at this juncture, because I'm sure we could continue making some decent uh, games, is we, we, this 2D graphics version 2 is in Important. We need to start skilling ourselves up in the use of these graphics because that's the only way we're going to be able to get further and further into the game in terms of what level of graphics we're using. Uh, we might as well add linear story and save game. In my original playthrough, I eschewed the addition of these two and I kind of regretted it afterwards. So let's give ourselves these two levers to add in at our leisure. Let's create the engine. Now, if we're lucky, well, we're going to need to make an E for everyone um, Wild West game because those don't really do well with the young. Um, but things like school and crime, those we need to wait until we get our audience uh, uh, manipulators here to make them young and mature, respectively. Okay, so let's make use of our new engine here. Pick a topic, Wild West, please. Pick a genre, let's do an RPG. Great combo. And we're gonna do it for the TES. Now, we do have to pay an $80,000 licensing fee, but right now that gives us access to the best thing in the market right now. So we might as well, and we're gonna, we only have to pay that once. So we'll be able to get our, um, continue using the TES in the future without having to pay another 80K every time. Um, and we'll be using the Pinstar Prime Engine. And now for a name here. Uh, we'll call you... Alright, we'll call this... Uh, let's see... Southwestern Ranch. About a, t a band of bandits that steal salad dressing. Alright, now the important uh, part here is uh, 2D graphics version 2. We want to make sure we use this. Start development. Now, this is a design focused game rather than tech, so our slider is going to be way different. 
Um, now, I'm not going to key in these extra goodies just yet. We're going to we're gonna press those into service when we start sort of uh, farming up our, our uh, what I call the smash hit. And it's a scripted event in the game, but you got to know how to trigger it properly. Uh, which I will be showing you in the next episode. But we don't want to trigger it too early. You want to trigger it somewhere about halfway. Uh, well, you want to trigger it on your ninth game if you're doing everything correctly. Um, so dialogues, level design, not so much with the artificial intelligence. Just depend on that old AI roulette with the uh, RPG uh, mechanics here. World design up, graphics up, sound down. Which is odd for an RPG, but I guess they had to put something as a negative in there, otherwise they would just demand all three of them. Alright, our ratio is doing pretty darn good. Um, and actually our bubble count's not too bad at all. Uh, so this game's probably going to be a really good one. RPGs at the beginning of the game are probably the easiest. And actually, throughout the game, RPGs are probably the easiest game to hit right as far as bubble ratio. Um, and I, I do like me some RPGs. See, we're building up some skill to 2D graphics V2 itself. So this needs to get uh, up, uh, up a level, um, uh, actually I think up to level 3, before we can start researching the next incarnation of the graphics. Mono sound. I'm still waiting for those target audiences. Let's see how this did before we end the episode here. So, how did our ranch uh, salad dressing bandits do? Uh, maybe not as good as I thought it would be. Which is fine! Which is actually fine. The, um, uh, the, 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 the TES actually has some built-in penalties to it because it is not actually as as usable as um as the computers as far as like you know implementing games there's a lot of inherent penalties to using it um that kind of help balances out its dominant market share um so it's hard to make a better game on it so maybe i should have queued some of those on but that's still fine by me let's get that let's get our game report on and yeah see despite that being pretty low we're all we've already cracked 10k in the first two weeks that's uh that's pretty darn good there all right folks i think we're in a good spot we've got a good set of topics to us and a few better ones on the horizon and um yeah i think uh and our finances are certainly doing decently well we were able to crack into the uh, uh the tes and still keep ourselves financially afloat so if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment good bad or indifferent your feedback is always welcome so until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya!